Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Today, I have a very, very special guest for you. This is my good friend and someone that I really admire in the space, entrepreneur, just all around wonderful human. I would say someone that I can count on for some spiritual insight and someone who's just really dedicated to his own personal growth and development. And that is my friend, Ree Perez of Branding for the People. He is a CEO. He is a masterful brand wizard. And he has worked with a lot of major brands to not just update some of them, but to really help them relaunch back into the market. And if you go to the Branding for the People website, oh my gosh, Welcome to the Mary D Show. I'm your host, Mary D, here to be your guide as we extract wisdom and life lessons from top CEOs, thought leaders, artists, spiritual luminaries, and wellness experts. My intention is to bring you value in every show that sparks an idea, helps you break a limiting belief, or encourages you to create thoughts that uplevel your life so that you can know from the deepest parts of your soul that everything you want is available to you and that abundance is your birthright. In 2018, I healed from breast cancer holistically after surgery without the use of chemotherapy or pharmaceuticals. I love biohacking and plant medicine and exploring spirituality and what it means to be in relationship with spirit so that we can feel whole and complete no matter what life throws at us. My specialty in the business world is strategy and leadership, and my gift to each of you is my ability to listen so that I can help others see themselves. In each episode, I want to sprinkle you with some hope dust, tickle your funny bone, and inspire you to find your inner roar. Get ready to live your most aligned, purposeful, and joy-filled life now, and enjoy the show. Yeah, so we really relate to ourselves as in the business of transformation. And then more specifically, we transform the brands that are transforming the world. Mm, Yes, (laughs) beautiful tagline. And again, the quality of the work that happens through branding for the people, you're going to feel it on today's call. And part of that discovery is us talking to Re Perez about who Re Perez is and how he ticks and operates. Re and I, we met at a Camp Maverick. Yannick Silver puts these on. We were instant friends. We had this instant like brother-sister energy and we were like bantery right away. And then that was the end of it. We just knew we were going to be friends forever. And one thing that's always a pleasant surprise to me, Re, that I don't know if some of our listeners are aware of and even our friends that are listening, is that you have actually for a very long time been very invested in personal growth and development. You're like certified in a lot of things through training classes. Like this isn't like you read a few books and you pat yourself on the back for being a woo person at the end of the day. Like you actually have deep dived into some actual real work. So talk to me about when does that happen or how did that happen for you? So a good friend of mine, we were just hanging out one night and I was in my 30s, early 30s. And I was just feeling really unfulfilled. I was feeling unhappy. I was feeling really stuck. And my friend was completely baffled. He's like, you're good looking. You have a great career. You have your own home. You have all the stuff that you might think are great indicators for someone to be happy and fulfilled. And I was so stubborn. I was probably a bit more righteous. It was probably all my traumas, sort of my shadow work sort of coming in to like really survive in this world in New York City. And he had said, you should do this thing. It made a big difference for me. And it was called the Landmark Forum. You know, I wasn't really into personal growth and development at the time. It felt cultish. It felt like, I don't need to do that. I had such an attitude about it. (laughs) I was like, what could this course possibly do? Like three days, three and a half days, I have to give up my weekend all the stories. And so what was great about that conversation is that he really stood for me. And if you've ever had the experience where someone really stands for you and all your bullshit limiting beliefs, it was actually a bit more assertive. He was like, just do the fucking landmark for him. (laughs) And this is in 2001. I remember it to the day. It was like uh, right before Easter weekend in April, the same year as 9-11. So several months before 9-11. And I did it, the landmark form in the World Trade Towers. So. Wow. 
now that I've arrived there, that cracked me wide open. I was just, everything made sense. I got it. I got a lot of the distinctions. I think I got it a lot faster than a lot of the other people who were there. And I was like, put me in the advanced course and then put me in this. And then I just kept taking myself on because I felt like I was on ecstasy and I wasn't taking ecstasy. I just felt, and not that I would know what that feels like. (laughs) I was just going to say, so you're saying you know what that feels like. It felt, I just felt so alive. And then that's when I knew that I was hooked. And then that's when I knew that I wanted to develop mastery in developing myself and mastery in these distinctions. And I think that's the answer to your question. It's like, that's sort of the entree. That's kind of what opened it up for me. And then just to kind of put a nice bow on everything I just shared, like fast forward, I have done lots within that organization from coaching to doing their leadership program, coaching, executive ed coaching it, taking on leadership roles within the company. And then after I completed that, there were new tools and new things in personal growth and development that I could take on that were not within that discipline. But it was the opening that allowed me to have the listening for and the readiness and willing to kind of explore what else could I learn about myself mm. and what other tools could apply as I move along in these different seasons in my life. Oh, that's so good. And what is the one thing, and maybe there's not just one thing, maybe there's more than one thing, but maybe one thing you can think of right now that you know now that you wish you had known before you started your personal development journey? So it's a couple of things, but it's kind of in the same conversation, which is I am enough and that it's just faulty or doesn't serve me to walk around not feeling that I'm not enough around people who are also walking around feeling that they're not enough. Why would I possibly want to get acceptance from someone else that's probably in the same exact conversation, more likely, in their head about they're not enough? But the crux of it is that I am enough. I feel like people can go their whole life feeling not enough. I know the one that I see the most in the world of consulting is folks who have a lot of imposter syndrome. Yeah. That's the one I see the most. And that is rooted in not feeling like you're good enough. And it goes back to your self-esteem, your self-worth. It's this whole cycle. And that one. That's a big one. This life, I feel like, is a journey of self-love. Yes. I totally concur with that. And I think just to piggyback on what we're talking about now or what we opened up is that I'll speak for myself. Like maybe I intellectually understood I'm enough, but when you really start to embody that and then also just know that you might have that conversation still in your head of like, you're not this enough, or you're not that enough, but it's the awareness, the self-awareness of like, oh, that's just a conversation. Let's quiet that conversation. Let's pick on a new conversation that you can actually be sensibly in control of the conversation that you're telling yourself. Or you can at least be mindful of it because our brains, they say some things and it's not always necessarily for you to act upon it. So yeah, all the conversations that we have in our mind. How have you navigated your own personal growth and development and the changes and shifts that you've made within yourself? One great example is you just being able to even say, hey, I was this person who was a little self-righteous and like, I don't want to give it my weekend, stubborn, right? Because that's part of the fun of your personality also, I'll say that. And as the people who are closest to you, like our family, right? Our family is such a good example or our friends that we grow up with. Like, how do you navigate those shifts? Because now you're not showing up as the person that they've known you as. Sure. Right? It can be confusing for them. Or I think that's where you also get people who are like, "Mm, what's happening here? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. There's two parts how I want to respond to that. So there's probably aspects of me that sort of shifted, right? Like there's new ways of beings that I can adopt. Maybe I'm softer, maybe I'm gentler, maybe I'm kinder. So I definitely think that there was new ways of being that I've adopted that people are like, whoa, what's different about you? And I honor that. And I think that's great. And then people can interact with me in a different way, or it kind of interrupts what they call they're already always listening. The way that they currently listen to you, it shifts that dynamic and therefore it can shift the relationship. The other piece of that is, and you pointed to this, which is there's still an aspect that's still very much my personality, 
And it might occur as arrogant or confident or witty or funny or rambunctious or whatever, like when you and I hit it off, right, that banter. But how I navigate that now, at least, is particularly like humor. Let's just use humor. Maybe people can relate to this. Like I like to crack jokes. Sometimes I'm always cracking jokes. When I start to become self-aware, when am I using comedy and humor as a way of connection or as a method for deflection? So sometimes I'm just more aware of like, ooh, this might not be the right time to crack that joke, even though it would be super funny. (laughs) This might not be the best time. Like hold it in that pocket for a little bit longer just to be with maybe something else there. And it could be a deeper and richer conversation with someone. It could be a range of other things. But that's one of the things that came up for me was like, hmm, sometimes I'm a little uncomfortable with such serious conversations all the time. And I love deep conversation, but sometimes I like to break it up and bring some levity to it. But sometimes it's about holding in that pocket of like staying in the deepness and the richness of a conversation to see how can you go a little bit deeper. Thank you for joining us on today's show. I hope that today's session inspires you to live an aligned life where you get to take complete ownership of your feelings and decisions to live in your truth. You can connect with me more at www.maryd.com. You can also catch us on YouTube at The Mary D Show. Head on over to Instagram and Facebook and type in at The Mary D and just look for the little blue check to ensure you're on my official page. <laughs>